Welcome to a Nonsense Wars production. This video features my Not Scissor Lift version 2, a rebuild I have been meaning to attempt for a while. The first Non Scissor Lift was one of my earliest GBC modules, and it contained a lot of it just needs to work in the design with much less concern for operations and aesthetics. Still, the module proved to be very reliable, though its bulky implementation limited practical use in layouts since it could only be loaded from the back or the right due to the counterweights on the left, and loading from the right required a ramp as the base had a bigger footprint than the input area. I also had qualms with the relatively messy construction and the use of rubber bands, which could rot or stretch. Many of these design decisions manifested from my lack of GBC building experience at the time, and from my desire to do everything from scratch rather than look at any prior work. Having had more experience building and operating modules, and this one specifically, I felt that I could address the issues with the first version, mostly by compacting and cleaning up the lifting mechanism such that it fit inside the frames and underneath the loading and lifting platforms. I had already found a way to better implement that mechanism when I built my extensible tower, where the drivetrain can adjust the range and the magnitude of the main lifting arm to suit the required travel of the tower. Using this mechanism in the not scissor lift gave me more flexibility on how to arrange and thus compact the rest of the drivetrain, and you can see the equivalent parts. The two 16 teeth gears are analogous to the 40 teeth gears, and both cranks drive the rockers attached to the input gears. This drivetrain also allows me to replace the rubber bands with springs as the introduction of the adjustable gearing stage allows the cranks to more practically push the mechanism rather than pull on it. In fact, I could probably tune it such that a hard link would work, but I would prefer to compress the spring to maintain the dwell time at the top. The dwell time at the bottom is still largely from the slop in the linkages. Now we can look at the difference compared to the first not scissor lift as well. The lifting linkage has been reduced to the bare minimum number of parts. There is a bit of positive feedback here. The less parts I use, the lighter it becomes, and the less reinforcement it needs in the first place. I converted the loading ramp to the same style of ramp I use in all my modules now, as I really did not like having so much non-square geometry on the original ramp. The counterweight for the loading gate now runs under the loading ramp, and the counterweight for the lifting platform has been shortened such that neither block loading from the sides of the input area. Power comes from an M motor, and the net gear ratio is 1 to 45, close to the net gear ratio of the original module, though this one uses one less gear stage. I've added a clutch in front of the motor in order to move the lifting platform manually, mainly so that I can more easily store it retracted and not pressing on the spring. Keeping the rubber bands loose in storage was another problem with version 1. Finally, I just want to take a look at some of the carnage I saw when dismantling the old module. The old module was not one that was 
run excessively at the MOA Christmas display, so I did not inspect it at the time and subsequently did not notice that it also had some dust buildup just from normal running. There's considerable wear on most of the gears, but seemingly more so on those in the middle of the drivetrain, presumably those running at moderately high RPM with moderately heavy torque. On that note, this is the end of the video, so have a nice day.